Hello. Hello, Ingrid. Hello. Hi, Kristen. How fun to be here. This is going to be a blast. I'm so excited to have you on the Confident Leadership Series. So in the interest of time, let's get into it, right? Let's do it. Okay, cool. So, yep. I mean, I am Kristen Gutierrez, a best-selling author, a leadership expert, born with sales in my blood, and I am so honored to be here with you today, Ingrid. Um, Why don't you go ahead and for everybody in my community who doesn't know you, tell us who you are and why you're awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Kristen. It has been nothing but uh, joy and fun uh, since I met you. So I'm really excited to to be here today to speak to your community and chat about all things um, confidence and leaders, leadership and trust, all of our favorite juicy topics. So um, let me introduce myself. My name is Ingrid Christensen. I'm the president and founder of Inco International. We are a language service company based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where it is currently terrible, rainy, cold, and not beautiful. But neither here nor there, there's lots of fun in my heart. Um, I am also a best-selling author. It feels surreal to say that, but I published my first book, uh, The Language of Trust, in just this March, and it's been a wild ride, a fun ride. And um, I'm really excited to dive into the concept of trust. Trust is something that we need, that we have, that we know we need it. Um, Oftentimes we don't know what it is, what it entails and how important it is. So look forward to jumping into these juicy topics. Yes, thank you. I mean, we haven't, you first came onto my radar, I would say in the spring of this year, right? Because of the books, yours came out in March, mine ended up coming out end of May And then we met in person for the first time, what, like two, three months ago, two months ago. Yeah. 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 So I think I pretty much stalked you because there's not very many authors in our industry. Let's just be, let's just be honest. There's a few of us, a handful, right? Um, And uh, being a female author, like I was really interested in getting to know another female author from our industry, wanted to know why you decided to write the book, a little bit about your history. You're obviously very energetic and you've got a lot going on. And I felt like there would be some alignment in that. And I think that you would say that that is true. So yeah, we haven't, we haven't known each other that long, but it's a, it's been a fun short time. Yes. And I know as a teaser, we're working on something really fun with another female author in our space. So hopefully we can bring some of that to fruition. Um, But in the meantime, we like, as you said, we both said, we both recently wrote best selling books. And because today's leadership confidence topic is about trust mm-hmm. and yours is called The Language of Trust, tell me broadly, tell us broadly about your book. Let's set the stage. Okay. So um, I am somebody who always wanted to write a book, but then I never thought I would write a book. Um, so we'll just say that. Like, I didn't really set out saying I was going to be this author, but then it it happened. But it was an awesome journey, right? Um, So this concept of trust just kept coming up over and over and over again. Since I started this industry way back in 1999, fresh out of college with uh, little more than than a dream and big ambitions. And um, what what I realized actually when I when I pinpoint back to my very first interpreting assignment. So I was a Spanish interpreter. So I remember walking into children's hospital. I was petrified. I was nervous. I had no idea what I was doing. It was literally my first time interpreting. And I walked in and there's this beautiful couple holding this beautiful baby girl and she's crying inconsolably. They were first time parents. I know you're a mom. I'm a mom. Like we understand, right? And we get it. And they had no way to communicate. The doctor had no way to communicate. And the minute that I started interpreting, I could visibly see the anxiety melt from their face and turn into the state of trust. And it was such a powerful moment that just grabbed my soul. And I knew at that point that I had found uh, my calling, that I had found this passion that I never really knew existed within me. And to be a voice of the voiceless has really turned into into my my life's work. But the underlying theme since that first day has always been trust. And I think, 
well, I know for sure for me that the, what I've called the end user in the book, and you can call it a lot of different things. You can call it consumer, you can call it LSP or LEP, you can call it any number of things, but just for sake of consistency, I'm calling the, the people that actually use the content that we translate and, and we interpret, calling them the end user. And there is so much trust embedded in them listening to our words, reading our content, and trusting inherently that it's accurate. So that's really where this idea of trust um, started. And then, then it was a slippery slope from there. Then I just dived into the deep water. Well, it, it, give, it literally gave me the chills when you were telling that story mm -hmm. because I can put myself in that, like I, I could put myself in your shoes and I could feel the, the transfer of trust in that story in that moment. So that's really empowering. And I think, like you said, the it really does all come down to trust. Even in sales, depending on no matter what you're selling, the saying goes, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. For sure. And for as sure. I coach teams all the time, it's like they don't know you. And so you have to get them to trust you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a selfless act like that. And other times it's knowing not to blow up people's DMs on LinkedIn, making it all about me, 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 and finding some of those commonalities, yeah. right, in order to build that trust. Yeah. Yeah. Conversation for another day. Back to the book. I know in the book, there's a chapter on the C's of trust. Mm -hmm. Tell me what your C's are. Well, I'm not going to read all the C's because it's actually David Horsiger's work. He's an amazing trust researcher and he's, you know, done lots and lots, many more years of research on trust than I ever could or would ever even quite honestly have the um, attention span for. But there is one C that is missing from his C list, which I personally think is one of the most important and it's confidence. And it really aligns with your series here, right, on confidence. And people, I think, don't understand how important confidence is. And I think they for sure don't understand how you get it, right? How do you become a confident person? How do you become a confident leader? How do you become a confident salesperson or a confident anything? Because let's let's just... Um, like wipe it, so wipe the, the slate clean. I think our number one responsibility as leaders is to exude confidence and competence in everything that we do. That's hands down. And I do think that that is one of the secret ingredients to creating and enabling trust to flourish. Yes, confidence. I mean, that's kind of where when you and I were talking about this series and bringing you in, why it just made so much sense to anchor it in the book, but also in, you know, the characteristics um, that you embody as a leader and what's so important. So when you're talking about confidence, we're talking about somewhat of like the courage to lead, even when it's mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. um, that it's like that gut feeling, but talk with us a little bit more and, and I can, you know, fill in some context too. Like yeah. what is, how do you feel about that? Like the confidence or the is the courage to lead even yeah. well there's i think it's a little bit of the chicken or the egg right and i do think um that leaders have a responsibility to make the hard decisions it's not that we get to we have to and because we have to we get to right it's a huge responsibility but it's also a pretty awesome thing to be in that trusted position to make the hard decisions so let's first like acknowledge that um, and I think second is um, confidence is a little bit fake it till you make it. And I know that that's kind of a cheesy way to look at confidence, but we can all go back in time to our 12 year old, 13 year old selves. <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee that not a single person said, mm, I was a really confident 12 or 13 year old, right? Nobody was. We had pimply faces. We had weird baby fat, like, in strange areas, maybe our hair was sticking up, you know, maybe like we grew six inches overnight. So our pants were, you know, this much too short or whatever it was, like, it's just an awkward time. And you feel like everybody is thinking about you that everybody want, you know, has an opinion about you when in actuality, and you don't find out until you're probably 30 that 
everybody is so worried about themselves that they really don't have any energy to, to give you. But that's that's neither here nor there. But I think what we can learn in those formidable years is that you have to fake the confidence. You have to fake it till you make it. Walk into a room and exude exude confidence, exude energy, exude um, a, a, a calmness, a sense of calm. And I don't think it's about being, um, it's not about being cocky. It's not about being snotty. It's not about being better than or thinking that you're better than anyone else. It's that you step into a room and you know that you belong. Yeah. You know that you have a place there and you are not afraid to show your true authentic self. And I know that we're going to get into that in a second, because I do think that that's also the number one way to build confidence in the people around you and yourself is showing vulnerability. But I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But, um, you know, really, it's it's understanding what are the steps that I can take to um, be confident when you, there's no confidence pill. It's not like you take a pill, then all of a sudden you're like confident one day. No, it's like slowly but surely you gain confidence in yep. yourself and everything that you do. And through that, this is probably the most important lesson that we're gonna talk about today. Through that, you learn to trust yourself because the bottom line is, this I know for sure, you cannot trust anyone else, nor can anyone trust you until you learn to completely and absolutely trust yourself. Yep. It doesn't exist. If you can't own it within, you definitely cannot show it outside. And that's one thing that confidence helps with. Um, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go somewhere else. But I do want to comment that it's like self. It's like love. It's like loving mm -hmm. others, right? Until you really, truly love yourself. Perfect. And and what that means for confidence, especially as it means for leadership. But I think you've touched on a few really important topics around broad, broad strokes confidence. And it's also the, the antithesis to that, which is imposter syndrome, mm. right? Because mm. you mentioned, like, we don't realize 30, 40, maybe 50, like, you might never, we, you know, it, it's a constant learning that, like, people mm. are thinking about us. They're thinking about themselves. But yet, yeah. we see and we live in this hyper-connected world now, which I love, but like it's still, it rears its ugly head, the theme of imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and how to get out mm -hmm. of your own way, right? And yeah. like really be, again, like the words you mentioned, vulnerable and authentic, yeah. so true to that. So like having a system, having a path in order to overcome imposter syndrome, um, and then vulnerability and authenticity and transparency, tying yeah. those together to step into your confident self. Yeah. 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 Let's just take a, just a hot second to just lean into this imposter syndrome. I, I think now it's something that we, we talk about, we discuss, or maybe it's like a certain level, like it becomes um, apparent and we talk about it and then we can find ways to work our way through. But I remember feeling um, paranoid, I don't know about paranoid, petrified probably is a better word, petrified that I was going to be caught because I could not imagine that some of the seats that I was, that I was taking up, some of the places where I was standing in, some of the conversations that I was holding, I could not imagine how my voice, my person, myself, could possibly belong there. And it took me a long time to verbalize those words. The first time I verbalized them, I remember writing it down on a piece of paper where I feel, and I didn't know that imposter syndrome was a thing. I just thought, I feel like people are going to find out I'm a fraud. Yeah. And the first time I spoke it out loud, everyone else was like, well, yeah, I got that too. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> crap, I guess we all got it. And then you realize that it doesn't really matter. And <laughs> because we all are fighting this the same thing but it is it's trusting yourself and trusting in the work that you've done to know that you do have a place that yeah. your voice does matter that you do have the right and the responsibility to stand exactly where you're standing to be exactly where you are right that's what's going to tumble that imposter syndrome that's yeah. like shining the light on it so brightly that it just dissipates 
Yeah. I'm like, I, you know, I mean, yeah, we prepped for this and it's such a great topic. Right. But it's like always what's in the moment with being confident about leadership or about a LinkedIn live series is the ability to also be agile and flexible. Right. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants my worksheet, totally free, no strings attached on steps to overcoming imposter syndrome, because it happens to be a topic that I do talk about on stages and that's very near and dear to my heart because I mean, I wouldn't be, none of us would be where we are if we knew, if we had the, didn't have the tools to overcome it. And sometimes right. we're more confident, like you're saying, in overcoming it. And other times we need a nudge, we need a push, we need a solution, a tool, a system to help us. And, yeah. and sometimes it's both. So uh, send me a message on LinkedIn and I'm happy to send you my free worksheet. I wanted to mention okay. that. Um, but yeah, so let's like in the interest of time, we could talk about this all yes. day. Yeah, we, should... we sure could. Yeah. <laughs> so like, let's, let's make sure we tie this concept of confidence into the leadership, right? Because one thing I know you're passionate about through your work as a CEO and that I'm passionate about maybe in my second book, spoiler alert, right? helping leaders <laughs> down their role. And a lot of that yeah. has to do with confidence. Mm -hmm. We're going to mm -hmm. start seeing your book in mm -hmm. that's incredible. Mm -hmm. So like, let's talk about leadership and confidence. I'll, I'll like throw it over to you to see kind of what you come up mm -hmm. with. In the world. Well, here's the thing is that um, nobody forced us. Well, first of all, I want to level set. Um, nobody forced us to become leaders, right? Mm -hmm. We we chose the job. We rose to the occasion and we accepted the responsibility. Now, when I say responsibility, I say that very carefully because leaders do have a huge responsibility, no matter what kind of leader you are. It doesn't matter if you're a CEO if you're the leader of your book club, if you're the leader of the walk around the club, the block club, whatever it is, um, that is a leadership role. And with that role comes a bit of responsibility. And people are following you as a leader because they believe in your competence. And through your competence, you exude confidence. Yes. Right? Same people in the back. I love that. <laughs> we need to be competent in our skills every single day so that it exudes confidence. Now, I remember my professor, my last semester as I was graduating um, from my, my master's program. And he said, listen, he said, this is an amazing gift that you've given yourself. He's like, but also, this is a huge responsibility. You now have a responsibility to exude competence in everything that you do. You got to stay aware. You have to keep up with technology, with social media, with what's going on in the world, all these things to include and improve this level of competence that you have. And that includes things like jumping on a LinkedIn Live to think about how am I exuding competence today? How am I showing my confidence? How am I showing up for my team as a leader? These are all the little things that we do in order to improve and increase that, that level of competence and competence. So I do think that that's really important that we, that we understand that those two are intrinsically tied together. Um, and there's a, a gazillion ways to do that, right? Competence creates confidence. Confidence. I love it. I love it. The three C's. Ingrid's next book. Oh gosh. Don't put that, don't put that pressure on me. <laughs> um, but I, I really want to talk about like trust as it relates yeah. also to these topics of confident leadership and competence and responsibility. Mm -hmm. right? So as a leader, in your opinion, mm -hmm. like where where does trust begin? Where does trust begin? Mm. <laughs> well, trust begins, it's like a circle, it's like continuous, it's like always there, right? It is the single most important thing that we need to focus on, I believe. Um, because under trust, there's a gazillion things like competence, like confidence, like clarity, like communication, 
all of these, they happen to be a lot of C words, which in my, I have a chapter called the umbrella words of trust. And we talk a lot about the different um, ingredients, if you will, that go into making this, this, this beautiful thing called trust. Um, but we need to focus on it and we need to understand its importance. Now, here's something that I know for sure. Uh, trust exists on a continuum. It's not like you get it or you, or you don't. It's not like you have it or you don't have it. At first, I talked about that you have to trust yourself. So once you learn to trust yourself, then you can start to build this trust meter. And if you know any of Brene Brown's work, she talks a lot about um, the importance of vulnerability. And she talks about this concept of the marble jar, right? You drop a, jar, a marble in, and then sometimes you have to take a marble out. And that's kind of this, this concept of, of trust that exists on a continuum. It's not on or off. Some days there's a lot more. Some days there's a lot less. And let's just be honest. Humans are humans. People are people. Guess what? We mess up. Even the best leaders in the world mess up. The difference is they usually have a really smart team around them to protect everyone else around them from their, from their mess ups. But people like me in a small company, you know, I have an amazing team, but I'm going to mess up. And they're going to see those mess ups. But what, the best thing that I believe I can give my team is just calling a spade a spade. When I mess up, I just have to say, listen, you guys, I messed up. I'm sorry. You expect more from me and you deserve more from me. And I will continue to be a better person and a better leader. And here's how I'm going to fix it. So I go back and I figure out what did I, what did I do wrong? And I spend some time like you know, introspection and journaling and meditation. And by the way, all the things that we should be doing, could be doing, I don't really like the word should, we could be doing as human beings. So we got to spend some time. Yeah, exactly. You're journaling and all the stuff, you know, you got to wake up early. You got to drink the water. You got to work out. You believe us, you, you have to do it. Eat the protein. All the stuff. <laughs> Eat the protein. Yeah. Whatever. All the stuff. Um, that's another, that's a whole other <laughs> LinkedIn live. Um, but once you do all those all those things and you realize where you what the downfall was, what your what role you played in the downfall, then you can figure out how you're going to improve moving forward. And then you have to, as a leader, you have the responsibility to communicate that to your team. And I like to think of it as over communicate early and often. People used to need to hear things seven times in order to get them. I think now they need to hear them 12 times minimum. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. In order for them to really, truly understand. It's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to understand. And to be quite honest, like, sometimes that feels hard as a leader. Sometimes I feel like I'm, you know, gosh, I'm repeating myself over and over. But you have to trust the system, you got to trust the scientists, and you have to trust in this, you know, this formula. So, so I do believe that owning up to your mistakes, figuring out why the mistake happened, how you're going to fix it, communicating a plan, and over communicating early and often really helps exude that confidence that you have that you're going to be able to work through any situation, any issue, anything that happens, you're going to be able to lead that team through. Let's just think about for a hot second, like we've been through a lot of changes recently, right? I don't know of any leader that I know personally that has ever gone, led a company through a global pandemic, mm -hmm. right? But what, what our job and our responsibility was to do so with confidence and competence mm -hmm. and a sense of calm. Mm -hmm. The freaking out had to happen at night at home, <laughs> not in front of your team, Yeah, right? So I it's one thing to be, yeah, you gotta be, you have to be vulnerable and honest but at the same point, know where those vulnerability and, and honest break points are. I mean, I love it. I love all of it. Um, I think there's a lot to unpack here, right? Maybe we should talk at a conference together on this topic or like, right? Yeah, Let's do it. <laughs> um, but you, you're talking about earlier, like the umbrella words of trust. And we're talking about the responsibilities of a leader. And I think often and you also touched on it, like the team and how the team supports, right? And how if you have the overarching trust on the continuum where it's constantly going up and down, but it's always continuous, then there's something I love to coach on, which is Daniel Coyle's 
culture code book called the culture code. And ultimately I was thinking a lot about it when you were talking because you root your team and I'm talking about your broad team as a CEO and your micro teams within it. You mm -hmm. root them in, they identify, they self-identify three to five adjectives that describe them as a team with mm -hmm. your core corporate culture or mission mm -hmm. or vision values in the back of their mind. And then now these furthermore become like umbrella adjective or like, you know, you've got an umbrella yeah. adjective. My team previously, we came up with words, collaborative, accountable, responsible, and transparent. Yeah. And ultimately I could trust them and they could trust me because mm -hmm. whenever we're being transparent or I was asking them to do a thing, I knew that they would be accountable to the thing yeah. as the leader. Right. Yeah. I just was thinking about all of that as like a different spin on or adding mm. context to. I this. love that, Kristen. Um, my uh, current vendor manager, she does a lot of our HR, came up with this really, really cool. Shout out to you, Ellie. Thank you for this great idea. This really cool um, activity that we do when we welcome somebody to the INCO team. Um, we each go around and we say one word that describes INCO. And it is one of the most amazing activities for me to witness um, because sometimes I don't, I don't fully have, like, I don't understand. I don't see the day to day, right. I'm a little bit more removed and these beautiful words. I, I have a list of them and I, I keep them in my notebook. And a lot of those words are, I sprinkled throughout the book, but they um, just are this, this beautiful list of words that are become embedded into the culture and to hear them spoken organically from team members is something that is really special and really unique. So I'm really glad that you that you brought that up because I think it is such a cool way to welcome um, new team members, especially. Yeah, I think there's so much. Um, let's, in the interest of time, can you believe it's been 28 minutes already? <laughs> <laughs> no. So... <laughs> Um, yes, so much goodness. This is recorded. We will, you know, the, the, the replays will live on forever. We, either one of us okay. can get it to you, but what would you say like to wrap up? How would you wrap up this amazing, like multi-level, like really big topic? If you want me to wrap it up? Um, well, I suggest you go to amazon.com and find the language of trust. Um, but besides that, um, I, I said it before, but your your number one secret weapon in all things trust is trust yourself. Please, for the love of all things holy and good in this world, learn how to find a way to trust yourself. Once you do that, you will know that you belong exactly where you are. You will know that you can stand in your space you will know to your heart and soul that your voice is worthy of speaking and it will dissipate so much shame and imposter syndrome and so many of these yucky feelings that, that hold us down and keep us stagnant and keep us in a fixed mindset rather than a growth mindset. Yes. And the minute you're able to, and it's not like, it's not an easy task. I, I know that. I know that it takes a long time. But if we can every day move the needle even by 1% towards trusting ourselves, then this beautiful uh, two-way street, two-way highway of trust will really start to unfold around us. Dang, I love it. Yeah, so we will link your book in on all the platforms where we are streaming right now. We will make sure people can buy your book and access it. Um, thank you so much for being here, Ingrid. I've learned a lot. The comments that at least I can see, thank you. Everybody else is learning a lot. They're we're being in, um, they're being inspired by this. Yay! Say thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Actually, I owe you a huge, huge um, sense of gratitude. Uh, you are just an amazing person. I have a lot of admiration for you, a lot of respect for you. Incredible energy, and I just thank you for creating um, this this opportunity. Thanks for being here, all. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye.